All right. Good morning. I hope everybody's having a nice Saturday morning. I'm just going to refresh my feed here to make sure it's showing up at home for you guys. Um, but this is Paint with Lovejoy. And I teach primarily first time and beginner painters. And today's painting is going to be a colorful uh, rainy day painting, a walk in the rain. And we don't have a pre-drawn image, so this will be kind of nice. Um, so you don't have to acquire or prep your canvas anyway. So I'm just getting the chat box up. Awesome. Hi, Sonia. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Um, and if you have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I will address the question um, while I'm painting. So, like I said, a little bit of what you're looking at. We do have our panel here and I'm painting on an 8x10 panel and I have repurposed, re-gessoed this panel. So that's where you're going to see all this texture, maybe a few little colors underneath. And there is a link in the description box below if you would like to repurpose one of your old paintings so you can paint something new on top of it. Check out that link and you can put gesso or paint on top of it and then do a new painting um, on top of that. Just a bit of a side note, if you are making a painting gift for somebody, please use a brand new fresh canvas for them. It'll just be nicer um, compared to giving them a reused canvas. So the reused is more just for your practice um, and getting comfortable. Hi, Denise, thanks for joining us. Ah, 2 p.m. in New York. Um, is it sunny there? Because I was gonna say, it's actually sunny here in San Diego, so it feels a little odd to be painting a rainy day painting. All right, so what we're gonna do is it's gonna be pretty colorful and we're gonna be doing some X marks brush strokes, and then we'll be doing some kind of longer um, horizontal brush strokes on the ground to kind of give this reflection. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna kind of section off our canvas. We're going to have kind of a pathway that shoots across here and then our horizon line will be here and then we'll start layering our colors on top of that. So just to kind of get those in place first, um, I want you to take, I'm using the middle size brush or you can use your pointy brush and I'm making a really light yellow color and this is again so we can paint on top of it and start laying out our structure. I'm going to make mine, I'm actually probably going to use the straight yellow so you guys can see it at home, but I want you guys at home to use um, just a really light yellow color, uh, white with a touch of yellow. So once you've kind of got your color mixed, like I said, we're going to put our horizon line in there and we're not quite splitting the canvas in half. We're going to go a little below that. So starting at the bottom, you want to go up maybe about five or six inches and we're going to put a little line. And again, it's not quite halfway, it's maybe an inch or two below halfway. And then I want you to go to the other side of the canvas, do the same thing, go up about the same amount, place your little mark. If you need to do that in the center right here, you can. And then you're basically just gonna connect your dots all the way across. I try to take you back to kindergarten as often as I can. Awesome, hi Beverly, welcome from Palm Bay, Florida. And Denise, I'm glad it is uh, nice and sunny over where you're at. And hi Jen, thanks for jumping on. Cool. Okay, so we have our horizon line on here. Now we need to create kind of our pathway. So starting at this horizon line on the left-hand side, go over maybe three or four inches. Again, doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be a perfect straight line. And we're just kind of curving our path this way. So this will be our path. This is going to be kind of some grassy area. We'll have some light poles coming up and then we'll have all of our crazy, awesome colors. Okay. So like I said earlier, for this brush, uh, for this painting, we're going to be doing some rather expressive brush strokes up here. We're going to do a little more linear horizontal brush strokes here. And then we will have a little couple um, underneath an umbrella hanging out here. And that will be the last thing that we add. So, Starting with that light yellow mixture, we're going to start light and just work our way darker. And if you're using student grade paint, I do want you to apply this just a little bit thicker. Even if you're using artist grade paint, apply it a little thicker so that way when we slap some of these colors on, our prior color will still be wet and we can mix a little bit of it into it. Okay, so again, we're going to kind of start from the bottom, getting light, and we'll get a little bit darker as we reach towards the top. And we're literally just going to be making X marks going right above that horizon line, filling that space in, um, 
any frustrations, anxieties, throw it into the painting. Um, you will feel better afterwards. And it's just nice that for this half hour or hour or however long it takes you to create your painting, you're escaping the world for just a little bit. So if you have the news on in the background, please turn it off and um, put on some nice music that you enjoy. We are here to relax and decompress a little bit. Okay, so kind of creating a light fuzzy space. I'm going to carry this up a little bit over here. If you are painting on a stretched canvas at home, carry this color around the sides and the tops. That way it looks nice when you hang it on the wall. If you're doing what I did and you're repurposing a canvas, don't worry about painting the edges because you're going to repurpose it later. So save the paint. All right. And if you have to mix your shade at any point today, two or three times, don't stress or freak out about getting the exact same shade. Variety in this particular painting is going to be to your benefit. All right. So I'm actually going to keep with this yellow and white mixture and I'm going to add a touch of orange to it. And I think I called it Sherbert and I pronounced it incorrectly, but I forgot to look at the correct pronunciation because one of you guys sent me an email um, and language is not my uh, forte. I've already mispronounced quite a few names on here in the last couple weeks already. So uh, I just, my brain works very dyslexic. So sometimes a lot of words really get messed up for me. Uh, but we're going for this kind of creamy uh, orange sickle color almost, a light orange sickle. Still keeping with those kind of back and forth brush strokes. And again, you can, for this particular painting, you can be rather sloppy. So that's why I say put any of your frustration, any of your anxiety into this. And as you watch where I place the color, just do the best of your ability to place it in a similar area. It does not have to be exact. Um, the reference item that I'm looking at is a rather impressionistic painting. Um, and I've just taken a small section of that painting for where the couple is walking in the, in the rain and recreating it kind of in my style, definitely changing stuff. All right, so here you can even see as I made that second color uh, or made that, yeah, the orange sickle color, I actually added a little more yellow on that one. So again, if you have variety while you're mixing your colors, that is only to your benefit. So don't try to get exact colors. All right. So let's see, let's get a little bit more hanging out over here. And as we go through the painting today, if you prefer a color that I'm not using, you can swap it out. If you prefer a color in more area than I put it, please feel free to switch it out and make that happen. All right, so pretty good space. Okay, we're gonna go in with a little bit darker in a moment, but we need to start getting some of those colors down in our path. And as we go below the horizon line, this is where I'm going to keep with more horizontal brush strokes. And it doesn't matter if you hold your brush kind of at an angle like I am, or if you're holding your brush straight up. At the angle, it's a bit of a wider um, application. If you hold it straight up, it's going to be a little bit skinnier. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. But taking that nice, nice orange sickle color and just applying it in a few places here. And I am going over that yellow line um, that I used uh, for the horizon line in the beginning. All right, I don't think we have any over there. All right. Okay, not bad. So if you are taking progress photos, this is a good place to take your progress photo. And we're going to start building on our colors. And again, getting darker as we reach the top of the canvas. Um, this area is going to be a little bit more blues and some purples in here. So we're just... It's going to be a nice painting this morning. All right, so now we're actually going to keep mixing into here, but we're going to be adding more orange. So just pulling more orange into it. If your orange sickle color was already pretty orangish, you can actually use the straight orange and then we'll be working our way up to the red orange color combo. So basically you want to go um, a little more intense than the color you were just using. So adjust what you need on your canvas. And again, remember above that horizon line, we're doing these X marks, slapping it on there, being very generous with our paint application and just having fun. All 
I hope everybody had a good week and nice um, socially distant plans for the weekend. <laughs> I am glad that some of the parks and beaches are starting to be open, um, but it still kind of scares me a little bit when I go out and don't see people with masks or people standing right next to each other. Yeah. So we all have our own um, ways of what we think about what's going on, how it's affecting us, uh, what we need to get done, where we want it to go. And it's definitely going to be an interesting journey for the world. Oh, hey, Ashley, thanks for jumping on. Awesome. Glad you were looking forward to this painting. All right. So now at this point, um, as I keep adding more, I am basically using that direct orange. And again, you can just kind of slap this anywhere, keeping with those X marks. We're gonna go in with the red in a moment. Um, let's see, maybe a few down here. And again, trust your instincts. If you are inclined to have a color somewhere on your painting and I don't put it on mine, you do what is best for you. All right, so going below that horizon line and just kind of keeping more with those horizontal brush strokes. Kind of light pressure overlapping a few of the other lighter colors. And as you are painting at home and you are observing the video, you are strengthening your eye-hand coordination. Um, you're looking at something, interpreting it, and then applying it to your canvas. So the more that you do this, like anything, the better you get at it, the more you train your eyes, uh, the more you train your brain, the more your muscles get comfortable with um, the applications, the brush strokes, the pressure of your brush, the mixing. So painting is um, not something that we usually get perfect right from the get-go, but it's something that we are constantly learning from. All right, so now I'm pulling some of that orange aside and we're gonna add a little bit of red. Tiny, tiny amount of red goes a long way. And we are going for kind of that burnt orange color. This is actually one of my favorite colors. I had a little too much red, so I'm trying to grab more orange. It does happen. Like I said, that red is quite powerful when it comes to color mixing. All right, so again, above that horizon line, just kind of making those X marks. And again, we're just making it to where we have our darkest parts at the top of the canvas. And then this lighter area, because our couple walking on the path is going to be right here, gives us nice contrast. And this is definitely one that if you are painting on an easel, um, it's nice to kind of have it propped up and get out of your chair and look at it from a distance every now and then. Um, and that's a little bit more of the normal viewing distance for, uh, for artwork and most things in life. All right, so going back to these kind of horizontal brush strokes on the bottom below that horizon line, kind of filling in that middle space. And because it is a rainy day, we're imagining that the colors that are up here are reflecting down on the ground. That happens all the time in life. We call them reflected highlights, reflected color. All right. Coming along nicely. So we're actually going to, um, I've got a good amount of paint, so I'm going to wipe that off on my brush. And because I'm still using the dark colors, I don't necessarily need to fully clean the brush but we're gonna be going into that direct red paint. All right, and just looking real quick, I saw a few more things pop up, so seeing if there's any questions. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Sonia. I actually do like bright colors. We are gonna put some darker ones in there to make it a little, um, not quite gloomy, uh, but it'll contrast it a little bit. I believe I do have a walk in the rain painting already on my YouTube channel similar color palette to what we're using obviously you can tell i like bright colors um, but if you want I've, I've had people switch this out to where they use all shades of blue or shades of gray and you know for the light yellow you use a light blue for the sherberty color you use kind of a medium blue and they just get darker and for the reds you might use purple instead so feel free to switch it out to create the mood that you want for your painting all right and wiping off some of that excess paint from my brush and going down to the bottom. I'm not adding a whole lot of this, just in a few areas. And again, just keeping with those kind of horizontal brush strokes on this path. 
Okay, oh, let's put a few over here. Why not? And this painting, along with that other one on my website or on the YouTube channel, The Walk in the Rain, it's really, really cool when you take your progress photos and look at this. Right now we have all the warm colors, yellows, orange, red. When we start adding the cool colors, it's interesting how it kind of brings some balance to the composition. And a lot of people are attracted to warm, cool color compositions with the yellows and the oranges and then the cool colors of the blue. So with that being said, I'm going to clean the brush really good and we're going to move over to our cool colors. We're going to come up with some purple in the top and then we'll come in with our cool colors over here. All right, so with some purple, I'm going to be using this directly by itself. And again, just kind of slapping it right on top of that canvas, making those X marks. And my paint is still really wet. So as I'm next to the red, it is picking up a little bit of the red as I move my brush and kind of creating a new color. So play with that. And again, remember to look at your painting from that distance, um, but it makes for a lot of fun. Let's see, let's put a little over here. Okay. And let's see, we've got a few down here, not a whole lot. So again, keeping that brush kind of just light on the pressure and keeping my horizontal brush strokes. I've always liked the purple and red color combo. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, make sure you breathe. If you're holding your breath, take a big inhale, laugh at me a little bit, makes for a good day. All right, so we're gonna kind of, next we're gonna put our base ground in here, and that's gonna be a blue and a purple color combo, because it is pretty dark. So I'm pulling a little bit of that blue aside, and I might actually lighten this up because this is super, super dark. Um, but I like, again, that blue and purple color combo. It's a different feel than the um, red and purple. The red makes it a warm purple and the blue makes it a cool purple. All right, so like I said, that's a little darker than I wanna go. So I'm gonna grab, let's actually grab some white from this side. There we go. And almost a little more blue. So I'm gonna add more purple. There we go, kind of a bit more of a periwinkle. Okay, that actually will work. We're gonna put some darker colors on top of that. So we're gonna kind of get our base um, on here and then we'll be putting some colors on top of it. So as we're on the bottom, kind of keep with those horizontal brush strokes and we're gonna basically be filling in the remaining portion of that canvas. And I do want you going right over that original yellow line. It should be dry by now. Um, and painting directly on top of it. So we're getting our base. All right, and really it doesn't matter if you end up switching brush strokes. I realize I just did that, um, but we're just filling that space in and then we're gonna be putting some colors on top. And at any point on any of these videos, if I'm using a brush and you need something smart, smaller or larger, feel free to switch out brushes. Um, I do tend to kind of stick with the same brush for most of the painting. It's just some weird thing that I do. But if you need to move down to the pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. All right, there we go. So it is okay if you need to overlap some of those areas just to basically get the rest of the canvas space filled in. All right, so we are at what we call the underpainting for our canvas. Um, and this is truly where I feel like a painting begins um, when there's no canvas space left. Now we're gonna be putting layers on top of this. And hi, Mike, thanks for joining us from Earth. I'm glad you're still here compared to Mars, though I'd be quite impressed if I could broadcast on Mars or another planet. <laughs> That'd be really cool. All right, so let's see. We're gonna start adding some colors into here. I'm gonna go for a bit more of that direct blue. 
And again, we're just going to be slapping it on here. Um, and just kind of, again, kind of thick, slap it on here. We're giving this part up here a little time to dry before we put our lamp post in. We've got a few trees along this parkway. And I am applying this blue paint kind of thick because I am going to come in with some yellow to make a bit of a green, kind of a deep green. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of red too. So I want to do some, what we call direct blending on the canvas. So when you kind of apply these thick chunks of color, I'm going to wipe my brush off and let's see, let's go for the red first. Then I'm going to grab that direct red and again, literally just slap it on here. And it's almost just like mixing your color here. We're not going to mix it as thoroughly, but as I move my brush, that red and that blue start to mix together. And this is where you can start having a lot of fun um, with these impressionistic, bold, thick colors, slapping the paint on there. Um, these will take a little bit longer to dry just because we are putting thicker paint on. All right. So now I'm going to clean the brush really good. I'm going to go in with some yellow. We're going to make green. And this is also a painting that I don't have black on my plate at all. Um, so taking you guys back to what I had to learn in school and still learn by creating a painting without the use of black. All right, so this one's going to be fun. This one's going to kind of change drastically. We're going to slap this yellow on here and you're going to notice that the more that I move my brush, the more it starts to mix together. So just like that wet on wet blending, there we go. Starting to get that really pretty green. And then you definitely want to wipe that brush off again to get rid of any of those colors. And then if you need to go back and reapply, um, or if you need to adjust some of your mixture, go right ahead and do that. And again, I'm not kind of pushing my brush and you know really blending it. These are kind of quick little brush strokes to where I'm picking up the underneath color, but I'm not thoroughly mixing it. Whoops, that's all right. Okay, so kind of fun. All right, so since we're not using black, I'm actually gonna use that blue and purple mixture for our tree trunks. And we can actually use that for the lamp post as well. So going back to that dark mixture, if you prefer a blue and red mixture or a uh, purple and red mixture, go right ahead. You can switch it up. All right, and actually, as I'm looking at this, I've been in the habit this week of changing the painting midway through. I think we might actually not do the trees and maybe just the lamp post. I don't know, let's see. So let's get the lamp post in there first, our light sources. So if you need to, move down to the pointy brush. I'm gonna be using this one sideways to kind of create our lamp post. And we're gonna be going over our other paint. So we are going over wet paint. So again, I'm gonna apply this kind of thick. So let's see, I'm gonna start where I want my lamp post to end. Lay my brush, kind of even pressure, pulling it all the way down into the ground. So you can re-go over that if you need to. And again, I'm using medium pressure. And if you need to move to that pointy brush, full permission to do that. So on this lamp post, I'm actually gonna make the bottom section just a little bit wider. So taking that brush, I have it sideways. I'm going to turn it um, full width now with a little bit more pressure and then just go over that same line that I was just at. There we go. Again, just getting you comfortable with the pressure of your brush. Don't stress. Remember to breathe. We're going to put one more lamp post in there a little further down the path. So same method, but we're going to be making it a little bit smaller. So instead of starting up here, we're going to start about maybe an inch below it and maybe two to three inches to the left of that first lamp post. All right. So again, holding it, my brush sideways, starting where I want my lamp post to end, placing the brush, slightly light pressure, and then just pulling it straight down until I get to the ground. 
Nice, and that actually shows up a little bit more high contrast on that lighter background. And then same thing, I'm gonna turn that brush sideways, make it a little bit wider for that base. And if you have to do that a few times, that's okay. Oh, awesome, glad you like it, Jen. And he, um, that is one of my favorite artists as well. And I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce his name because I'm sure I will butcher it. Okay, and I think that first Walk in the Rain one was another one that was inspired by his artwork. Uh, but he's been one of my favorites for a long time. Okay, so we have our light post and I think we're okay without trees. If you want to put trees in there, you can do the same thing. Basically, you create your tree trunk and then you have branches going up. Um, but I think just given the time, we're going to keep without it. So I'm going to take the pure white paint. We're going to put orbs, our light sources, on top of this. And again, we're going to place it on there kind of thick because right here my paint is still wet. Likely right here my paint is dry. So we'll start with this one. And again, I'm just kind of using light pressure. We've got our nice flat circle. When it dries, we're gonna put a little structure around it. And then same thing up here. And really all I'm doing to make that circle is I started at the top, kind of made a C shape. And then I'm gonna start at the top again and just kind of make it round. So it's almost like two parentheses to make your circle with that thick paint. Um, compared to placing a dot in the center, and making that dot bigger till you have the uh, size of the circle that you're looking for. And the only reason we're doing this differently is because that background paint is still so wet. And then again, if you need to, compared to coming in to your painting like this with your brush bristles coming in at an angle, if you come in kind of sideways like this, then it's more like icing the cake and you're placing that paint on there and painting it, placing it on there a little thicker and then your brush strokes, the ends of the bristles aren't going back to the canvas or picking up the color underneath. So the more that you do that, the more kind of comfortable you get with that pressure. Um, so let's see, we've got a question. Are the bases at the same point? Uh, they are not. So the top here is a little bit above the other one. The bottom base here, if we drew a line all the way across, this bottom base is about a half an inch shorter um, this bottom base ends about right here. I'll put a little mark in there so you can see it. And then this bottom base ends about right there. I'll paint over those, but I did that just so you can see where they stopped. Okay. All right, so while we're letting that dry, we're gonna put our little umbrella here for our uh, couple that is walking. And for this, I am actually gonna move down to that pointy brush, which makes it a little bit easier. And let's see, let's do a light purple umbrella. So I'm gonna take that purple, I'm gonna grab some of the white, and I'm actually leaving the purple that's on my brush. There we go, mixing it. And you can make your umbrella any color, any shade that you want. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. And we're gonna basically just be creating basic shapes here. So our um, umbrella is gonna basically be a triangle and then we'll have a hint, an illusion, that we have people underneath that umbrella. So again, get your shade that you want, what you like. And I keep making mine darker, so we're going darker on mine. All right, so our people are kind of hanging out in this area. We're going to start with the umbrella first, and then we'll put their bodies underneath. So let's see, maybe, maybe about two to three inches above that horizon line. We're gonna draw the base of our triangle. So draw a line, super exciting. And this is gonna be a rather flat triangle. Um, and maybe not so much of a point up here. There we go. Very simple little shape. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. Again, you can apply that paint a little thicker if you need to. All right, so we're going to clean that brush. We're going to be basically jumping back and forth. All right, and let's see. It looks like this lady's got kind of a red dress on. 
and I'm gonna make it pretty bold. So I'm gonna go right for that direct red. And if you're getting like me on your plate and you're starting to run out of space, you can always use the rim of your plate. Um, that way you're not breaking out another plate and then throwing it away later. So utilize all the retail space of your palette. Okay, so don't think too much as we are drawing the shape of a human figure on here. Try not even to think about it as a human figure. These are just shapes. So slight little blob for the head, a little bit of a circle, and I basically just used kind of the width of my brush. All right. And then a little below, right below that, we have our shoulder line. All right. And then this one, we're going to make, basically make kind of a tapered rectangle. So it'll be a little wider at the top. And again, remember to breathe. I am using a little bit more pressure on my brush, but the tri or the rectangle is wider at the top where the shoulders are, and then it gets a little bit skinnier towards the bottom. Like I said, we're just keeping simple, simple shapes. Don't overthink it. And we're gonna leave that as is. We'll make a skin tone, um, kind of a light yellow for the legs on there. And then we have another person hanging out with her, and that's on the darker side. So I'm actually going to use the blue to get his shape on there. All right. So I'm actually just using that direct blue. Same thing. He's got, and remember to breathe. His head's hanging out right there. They're standing next to each other, and it looks like they're the same height. Though maybe part of his head could be underneath the umbrella that we can't see. Again, we're just creating an illusion. So again, shoulders, it is going to come up next to the red. So it'll be careful as you're bringing your um, paint color next to that. And for the guys, they are a little bit uh, boxier. So this one's a bit more of a square. And we're making it about the same length as the red. But we're also going to give this guy some legs to where she's going to have leg, uh, bare legs and he has pants on. All right. So here... From this kind of square shape that is nestled right next to the red shape, we're going to take this and not quite use the full width of it. We're going to be creating a smaller triangle underneath this. So just kind of take your brush, pull it down, and then place your brush up here again and pull it down. Okay, again, just an illusion of people walking, not anatomically correct. Our brain is going to fill in a lot of the details. Okay, and I know and it's like a floating lady without her legs there. We'll get to it. All right, so to make the legs, you're going to clean that brush really good because you don't want to contaminate your color. And we're going to kind of go close to that sherberty color, um, just maybe a little bit more pink. So I'm going to use the rim of the plate right here to mix that color tiny amount of red to make our shade of pink and then we're going to add a touch of yellow to it so it's a different way to kind of get to that color you are more than welcome to change the shade the skin tone of the legs if you like so a little bit of yellow warms it up all right and same thing for the lady we're basically going to be making a triangle and if you are on a small canvas like this and you're finding a lot of difficulty with the smaller brush, feel free to move down to a toothpick or a paper clip. Oops, I just made her legs a little wider than I wanted to. That's all right. She's walking. All right, we're going to come back and kind of pull her skirt over her legs a little bit. Okay, so our weird shaped people, give that a time to dry for a minute. Now we're going to go back to our light source. Um, and let's see, I actually want that to dry. That's still pretty thick. So I'm going to move up to the middle flat brush again, and we're going to start putting our reflections down here and even a few more kind of hanging out um, in the background. So I'm grabbing that direct white, and we're going to start down here on the horizon line. And I like to imagine that, you know, the light source literally is directing and reflecting right on here. So I kind of start here, hover my brush over, just kind of pull it down. And then right here is where we're going to start. And I am going to keep with this just kind of nice kind of back and forth uh, vertical brush stroke. 
You will start to notice that your paint starts to get a little more transparent. Just grab some more. I am keeping light pressure. I'm not pushing that hard on here. And I'm kind of placing this color on top of the other colors. So we have to do the same thing here. And I just kind of hover, bring it down, and imagine that the reflecting would be kind of in this area. And again, remember to get out of those chairs, look at your painting from the distance. All right, and we've also got some light sources hanging out in the background, so we're gonna slap that on here. And we're imagining that maybe this pathway kind of curves around and you've got more areas to walk on. So there's this little row of lights. So this is pretty dry, so I'm actually just slapping my brush on there. Maybe a quarter of an inch of space in between those. And then we've got another low row of lights hanging out down here. And again, these do not have to be in the perfect position. It's just an illusion of what we've got going on. And let's see, let's throw it up here. All right. And this is one that as you start getting towards the end of the painting, if you're inclined to be like, hey, I want some purple here, I want some green here. This is where it starts to kind of come together and you're just, it makes more sense. So feel free to adjust and add the extra colors that you are inclined to. So now that we have our lights up here, we need that reflecting on the bottom. And I can tell that my people are already starting to dry. So I can put the other colors on top. And this one doesn't have to be completely lined up with the other lights, but we're just taking those same back and forth little motions, horizontal little lines. And again, just kind of be cautious as you come next to those people if your paint is still wet. All right, and then we've got a little bit of space. So if you need to move down to that pointy brush to do this one, go right ahead. This one is kind of hanging out right next to those legs. And if you wanted to, you could even go back and do this with some light blue. That gives the hint that we've got this rainy kind of color going on. And like I said, you can actually layer these over and over and over again. So if you're inclined to go back and maybe go do this dark blue and put a shadow reflecting on here, you can do that. All right, so I'm gonna move back to that pointy brush. We're gonna put a few little highlights on our post. So I'm actually not gonna use the pure white for that because it's almost too bold compared to our lamp post. So I'm pulling that white aside, tiny touch of your blue for a light blue. And again, we're basically just going a little bit darker. So using the tip of that brush, let's see, on the... Actually, the light source is coming from many different angles. So let's say, let's say on this bottom base, using that light pressure, there we go. And we're gonna do the left-hand side, left-hand side of the base. And again, if you're getting a lot of buildup on your paint, uh, on your brush, wipe off that extra paint and that will help bring the bristles back together again. These do not have to be perfect lines. If they're kind of broken up and a little textured, totally okay. All right, we're gonna clean that brush. Now I'm actually gonna make a light purple for the highlight on our umbrella. So as you can see with these really colorful paintings, it is a bit of a back and forth and it's a lot of fun. I do enjoy this style a lot. So making that light purple there's a little touch of blue in there. It's not going to kill you. Awesome. And I see a few more chats on there or comments. So give me a moment. I will look over. I was definitely a little focused on the painting. So on the umbrella, that right hand side, we're just kind of adding the light source because we're imagining that the light is being reflected from the uh, lamp post onto our umbrella. And let's see, comments and questions. Awesome, glad you guys are liking it. 
Oh, good. I'm glad it still looks like they're walking, even though there was a few little mistakes in there. And yes, fully agree that mistakes are what make it unique. And when you, um, I'm a huge fan of Bob Ross for calling them happy accidents. But anytime that you make a mistake, that's part of the personality of your painting. So you have to kind of embrace it. And if you can give it a story as to why it happened or why it's important, that just makes it more valuable to the customer that may be purchasing that painting. And, don't, and if you're talking to the customer, don't call it a mistake. You meant to do it. And thanks, Mike. Glad you like it. And thanks for reminding me to make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I do tend to forget to do the self-promotion here. Um, so with that being said, I'm using purple paint, we're going to put kind of the wire frame, just going a little bit over that umbrella. Um, but with the self-promotion part, make sure you jump over to my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, and just check out the courses and keep on painting. All right, so we got a few little highlights that I'm going to put on the people. So I'm going to make that pink, and this will be on the right-hand side of her shoulder, and I think we might adjust the the dress so kind of a little highlight on those shoulders coming down similar to what we did for the umbrella and again it's amazing how much our eye just fills in the space and the details and I am going to use some pure white just for a little hint of a highlight on her legs And then I'm going to keep that white that's on my brush and her partner walking next to her. His shoulders can get a bit of a highlight and a little bit on the legs of his pants. Again, does not have to be perfect. And I think I've, yep, I'm at about 40 minutes. So I went over the 30 minute demo. Not bad. I do think I'm going to start doing some longer and more in-depth ones. Let's see, what else do we have here? And I'm actually inclined to clean my brush really good. And I'm gonna go back to some yellow paint and slap it up here because I want a few other colors showing through. So same thing, as you're getting to this stage, if you're inclined to go back to that background, you can literally just slap this paint on top of it. My background paint is dry, so it is not mixing with it. So when you need to put a lighter color on top of darker colored backgrounds with acrylic paint, it is best to let them fully dry and then when you apply that new color, it stays more opaque um, and a little bit more true to the color that you may want going on top of it. It's one of the reasons why I enjoy layering with acrylic paint. And we're gonna take some of that and go down to the bottom here. Same thing, nice horizontal lines. It does help kind of having these different brush strokes and different sections of your painting to kind of um, just give the eye something else to look at, something intriguing. And again, trust your instincts for where you might be inclined to put these extra little blobs of color. Because it really, for painting, it so comes down to literally the last 10% that you do that brings it all together and really kind of makes it pop. All right, so as I'm looking at this, I'm actually gonna go in with the blue and we're gonna put some dark shadow reflections in here. Um, we're gonna put a few shadow reflections underneath our people and then our lamp post. Um, and then I'll see if there's anything else that I wanna add. And then that should be the conclusion of the video. So I'm going back to the blue paint. And just like we kind of did the light reflecting and kind of hovering our brush, we'll do kind of the same thing. So go to the base and I'm gonna just gonna cover that mark, almost forgot about it. And then right below that, you would imagine that that's the reflection coming on. And we would have another one kind of hanging out here. And then we're gonna do the same thing um, underneath the feet of the people. And we're gonna move to the pointy brush for that as we get into smaller and smaller brush strokes. So when you paint in this style, you're really just creating illusions of light and shadow. And what we're putting right here with the darker colors, these are the shadows. And then that white and the yellow, those were the highlights, the light areas. 
And just kind of opening up that shadow a little bit. Let's see, let's get a few more hanging out over here. Oh, and I should have extended that a little further. And because I did not like the extra purple that I added on top of the umbrella, it didn't stand out enough for me. I'm just going to go over those kind of the umbrella lines with the blue. Gives it a little bit more contrast. There we go. All right. And I'm going to look at it from the phone so I can kind of see it from the distance. Hey, not bad. All right. When I look at it on my phone, um, from what I'm filming for you guys, that's the same thing as looking at it from 20 feet away, 5 to 20 feet away, without um, having to get out of your chair or do anything. So remember to take your progress photos. And let's see, are there any other questions? I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. This ended up being a 45-minute demo. Um, lots and lots of fun. Like I said, now that I'm not in as much training for the 30 minute demos, I think I'm going to start doing some more involved paintings with you guys. Uh, so leave a comment what you want me to add to the live demo list. And if you need to see what I'm painting in the future, jump to the main page on the YouTube, scroll down, and you can see the future live streams as well as all the past live streams. So please keep painting at home. Send me photos of what you paint. Um, email them, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm actually going to be doing some social media scheduling posts today, and I want to post a lot of your guys' photos that you've been sending me to help encourage other people to paint. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for honoring me with your time today. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.